is it? Its will is weakening. One day, I'll catch a break. Because it knows I'm its master. I will finish this. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought, and it's taking all of the Emperor's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. No. 
and the screams of legions upon legions of unborn elephants. The pain rips through you, obliterating all thought, all feeling. Your tadpole burns in your brain. First time in a long time, your thoughts are entirely your own. And then, gravity. Everything you did, everything you sacrificed, it was worth it for this.
take a moment, savor our victory. Long may the coast winds carry our names. We did it. The nether brain is dead. My mind is clear. Its burden lifted. When the nether brain died, the tadpoles died with it. No offense meant, of course. I can never forget what you did for us, for the city. It makes little difference to me. I did what I had to to secure my freedom. And in spite of your resistance to evolution, you have proved a good ally. think so. I did my best. The Githyanki are departing in peace. Curious sight and a day already full of them. Speaking of Githyanki, what about you, Lazel? Will you be joining them? The Netherbrain is dead. To slay a Geich was my sworn duty. I must call out to Tunorath. My ascension's at hand. You are an honorable ally. I thought I would carry you. In truth, you oft carried me. I won't forget it. Silence now. I will speak the right. Vlakith Barnasin. Vlakith Ixaith. Vlakith Trinasaji. You quiver in spite of yourself. Lazel shouts to the astral plane, seeking an answer. And before long, she has one. A red dragon to carry me to Tunarath. The Queen's Covenant is fulfilled. You look on as Lazel soars to an uncertain fate. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city, smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Giontha. If I salvage the stones, I could retrieve it. Perhaps even wield it. With the crown in my hands, I would be unstoppable. I would be more than the greatest wizard who ever lived. I would be a god. It's I who should be saying such things. Do not think I leave you without a heart as heavy as your own. 
I owe it to myself to follow where destiny leads. I'll never forget you. That I promise. And if you ever felt differently, there'll be a place waiting for you in the heavens. I've never been on first name terms with a god before. It could have its perks. I can't imagine Mistra will take it lying down. Uh, floating. However, gods relax. Still, good luck to him. I'm sure he'll go far. <laughs> so, what now? I don't know about you, but I could use a flagon or three of ale. <laughs> Celebration, yes. And perhaps a drink, too. I will not be joining you. I fear my presence will be no more welcome in the streets of the city than it ever was. I never thought I'd be sorry to see a mind flare go, yet here we are. Be safe. I will miss you, too. Now that you no longer live in each other's minds, it's hard to tell if the Mind Flare is being sincere, though perhaps no harder than it ever was. I honestly don't mind what we do once we get to the... Ow! What the... Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, it was... It was nice when it lasted. Ah! I, I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I doubt we'll ever see that face basking in the sun again. It's over, and it's all because of you. You, who were destined to become a thrall. Thanks to you, there will be no illithid empire, no death god's tyranny. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. Last night was... perfect. Though... I couldn't help lying there thinking about my parents before you stirred. I gave them the release they asked for. Freed myself from Shah's grasp just as they wished for. But there's moments where I think I'd trade that to be able to see them again. Talk to them again. There's so much only they could have told me. But that's all gone now. I've got to move on. Find some place for myself. I was hoping you'd say that. Whatever lies ahead will be far less daunting if I have you. It could be just like old times. Well, hopefully not exactly like old times. I think I've had enough camping and mortal peril for one lifetime.
Since the Netherbrain fell, you and Shadowheart have seen more of Faerun than you ever thought possible. She no longer shies from wolves or water. Nothing in the world frightens her anymore. And you feel you could face anything by her side. One day, you receive a letter passed to you by a stranger who bows with deference. An invitation to a gathering of the friends and allies who stood by your side in the fight against the Absolute. He waste no time in packing and set off on the long road back to where all of your adventures together began. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more. Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. expect to be nervous but seeing everyone here like this it's strange isn't it I feel like I must have dreamed the last few months now I'm waking up back in camp with my hair smelling like wood smoke and fallen leaves stuck to my backside A little wine might help accelerate the process. So, we should divvy up what we tell people about what we've been doing these past few months. I'd hate to be a boar that comes along and regurgitates the same story to someone moments after you've told them. Any ideas? Well, there's the visit to the House of the Moon, fending off Sharon assassins. That stray imp that joined us. Bing bong, wasn't it? We've squeezed in a lot. And I'm glad I got to share it all with you. I'm sure we'll have them hanging off our every word. <laughs> I'll leave you to do some mingling, unless you need anything else. That can be arranged. a shame we're with company. I'd be tempted to let you whisk me away someplace quiet. With music in the air and wine flowing, oh, I think I'll manage. Don't get into trouble, but if you must, fetch me first. There you are. I was hoping you'd... Gods, I must look a mess. I just rolled out from under a pesky ogre when Withers yanked me in. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean... 
Well, I didn't mean that. I just gutted the ogre, not... Yeah. How about I change the subject before I dig this hole any deeper? It's so good to see you. And I've got so much to tell. The trolls I've torn open, the ghouls I've cleaved, the stories I've been itching to tell. Uh, I don't suppose you'd indulge me. <laughs> You'll have to choose one tail and one tail only, I'm afraid, or I'll be yammering all night. You want to hear about the Stegosaurus that bullied Candle Keep, the Impossible Lich, or the young dragon who crawled out of Deeping Cave? There are tales galore of a great green dragon called Clogiliometer. Try saying that five times in a row. Clogiliometer, Clogili Muffer, Clogger Mother, whatever. Let's call it Old Norbone. Turns out, Old Norbone had kids. And one of them flew the roost and took to stalking a small elven enclave outside Crypt Garden Forest. The damn dragon had turned the place into a slave camp before I arrived. Sordid beyond words. He was a big boy, but still a young'un. A wonder of the skies, but a lumbering oaf on the ground. I tried a sly approach, but the whelp saw me coming and up it flew. Poison poured from its mouth as it descended. I tumbled away, cast flesh to stone, and it crashed to the ground. I could have ended the battle there and then, but this was prey that deserved to be played with. The beast was a smoking heap of black-green scales once the battle was over. The elves and I sang songs and drank mead in celebration until their barrels went dry. I've missed you too. The rush of battles we fought, the heart to hearts, the nights around the fire, the comfort of knowing I didn't face the unknown alone. If I had to do it all over again, and I'd rather not, to be clear, I can't imagine not having you at my side. I wish you'd been there to join in. Oh, to battle together. Just like the old days. I suppose that's my way of saying I miss you. Tonight, I toast not just the people we've become, but the people we were. Warriors. Winners. Saviors. I've seen him more than a few times, and he's as proud of me as I am of him. He's leading the city's renewal, opened the gates to all newcomers, rebuilt the council from scratch. And he's back in his element, commanding the flaming fist with brave heart and no shortage of empathy. The likes of Gortash can bend people's minds with a few chosen words. No tadpole needed. Bane's chosen primed the fist for a war they weren't meant to win. He convinced them there was an assassin hiding in every shadow that cruelty was the correct answer to crisis. With a few exceptions, fathers pardoned every last fist. If my forgiveness not be tears will, so be it. I shall forgive them all the same. His words, not mine. He still believes in the bow and the blade, but he's teaching the fist a new lesson. She's kept her leash loose. 
Though, I've been no stranger to the Hells. Every target she set me on's been a demonic intruder. Tanari assassins who slip into Avernus. Armonites that amass near the Styx. My next mark's the most challenging yet. Or so she says. I don't know much more. Only that it's no demon, but a devil. <sighs> She's playing a game. I don't know what it is or how she plans to win, but I can tell you this much. I'd fall on my own blade and join the blood war in an instant should Zariel's hell-touched fingers stretch towards the coast. And as long as I'm more useful as a warlock, that's not a risk Mazora would take. Go on, the night's young. You shouldn't waste a moment of it. Or waste a single drop of wine for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oops, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. <laughs> Well, now, you can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. I'm glad the months have not been wasted, particularly as I spent them cleaning up the mess we made of the city. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers. Same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon. Same cisterns overflowing. Huh. I knew an Avarescan gray cloak who would say, Baldur's Gate will be the death of me. But I can't say it doesn't hold all of life. Baldurians simply get on with it. <laughs> Stubbornness, civic spirit, plain stupidity. Perhaps all three, but nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. To organize the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight ones. They might learn a thing or two if they don't expel her. Again. Ah, oh, there is still much to do. People to house. A Harper network to rebuild. I may have little love for this city, but so long as my family chooses to serve it, I can do no less. For all your travels, I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. Ah, oh, sentiment. With the greatest affection, I can think of better ways to sour our stomachs. I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er-do-well might have tampered with the wine. Why were we scrounging in barrels and crates for supplies when he could source these? So you made it! Oh. Well, look who decided to turn up. I wasn't sure our withered old friend could live up to his promise. But here we are. And you're looking more delicious than ever, if you don't mind me saying. Whatever you've been doing with your time, it clearly worked wonders. Ah, 
So it's the healthy glow you get from being a good person. That explains my pallor. But I'm glad to see the world has treated you well. You've earned it. We both have, in fact. And where better to celebrate our good fortune? An old haunt with old friends. <laughs> Cheeky. I've been very well behaved. Thank you. I've taken a turn as an adventurer and hero. <laughs> it turns out no one actually cares about murder, as long as you murder the right people. And apparently I'm rather good at it. <laughs> Let's not get carried away, darling. I'm still me. Perhaps more me than I've ever been. I did at first, but then I realized these shadows, this darkness, it's all a part of me. I spent too long defined by what other people did to me, the choices other people made for me. But that's over now. This is who I am, in all my glory, for better and for worse. That being said, I haven't completely given up on returning to the sun. If the opportunity presented itself, well, I wouldn't say no. But until then, I am happy. We've had quite the journey, you and I. From the moment I first threatened you, I knew you were someone special. Someone to take on the world with. I will miss our time together. But then again... Maybe this isn't goodbye, so much as it's, um, see you later, darling. Gail. A word, please? Isn't this a lovely... Well met. I am a magical projection of Gale of Waterdeep. And if you see this manifestation, that means I have prematurely perished. Alas, on this occasion I appear to have been erased from this plane in both soul and substance. So the usual protocol for revivification cannot be followed. I am, however... Available for the duration of this spell to assist with the tying of any loose ends related to my recent departure from mortality. A sequence of elegantly designed failsafes to be executed in order to reverse the occurrence of my unexpected but impermanent demise. As I am unable to detect any trace of my existence in reach of mortal magic, however, such a protocol would, in this instance, be destined to fail. However, on behalf of my creator, I wish to make abundantly clear that my death was an unfortunate accident and in no way related to any attempted usurpation of the reigning divinities of the day. I assure you, any claims of my intention to pursue Mistress Place in the Pantheon have been greatly exaggerated. I recall standing on the riverside, the icy chill of Netherese metal in my hands, and then... nothing. Gale of Waterdeep was gone. And so was I, until Withers kindly summoned me here to perform my final task. I have been entrusted with the delivery of a letter to be given to one who cared most for me in life. I hope these words do something to ease the tragedy of my untimely and honestly quite unexpected passing. With that, 
I'm afraid my spell is waning. Is there anything else you need of me before I blink out of existence? I think I believe Godhood was worth losing all this. Not dreaming. It is our old friend. Oh, and it is good to be seen. Oh, after so many days down in the dark, Minsk began to wonder if he was some blind bug who had only dreamed himself to be large and bulksome. You will forgive the aroma, I hope. We were not expecting the Dusty One to open a portal to our very cell. Boo had a moment to lick himself clean, but there is a little too much of Minsk to cover. Minsk and Boo have been helping, of course. We guard the streets, while Jahira is occupied with harperish matters. The Zentarum rule the city's underbelly, so Minsk and Boo went to give them a tickle. There were harsh words, battle cries, some manner of uh, head wound. We awoke in a Zentish cell, awaiting trial by noble combat. <laughs> I... Execution, says Boo, though I, I am not sure of the difference. It is a long walk to the gallows, and Minsk still has his fists, no? In ample time indeed. So long as the Bone Mage returns us to our cell by dawn, Boo would not be late to the bloodshed. But leave such matters for the morn. Tonight is for celebration and the telling of tales. How have you filled your days since we tore this sticky tyrant from the sky? Aha, the lovebirds still nest together then? <laughs> Minsk is glad. For what is life without a companion? Though I am thinking yours does not sit on your shoulders, eh? Ah, you are right, Boo. <laughs> that is, uh, none of Minsk's business. There is much merriment to be made before the night is done. Go, and greet the others. Minsk shall make himself presentable. Ah, this pond shall do nicely, Boo. Though I see no soap, so you shall have to blow the bubbles for me. Oh, hello. Let me guess, you've got some suggestions about the music choice. You have no idea who I am, do you? I thought Withers might have set the stage a little. Milil. Though if the lack of song prayers is anything to go by, that name carries less weight than it used to. Musical 
musical prayers were once offered to Menil, Lord of Song, a minor deity whose worship faded after offending the trickster god Cyric. I'm washed up, I'm afraid. You... You know? <laughs> You're bloody right! It is an honor! Finally! The scribe picks an adventurer of substance, of culture! What can I do you for? Fantastical news. Carry on, I shall. I have missed this place. And these people. Well, some of the people. There's something strange in your old friend's mouth. What is it? A familiar invitation. He wants you to throw the object he's dropped. But it isn't a ball. It's the astral prism. Scratch barks merrily in something like agreement. Thou searchest for the strongest warrior amongst thine band, Lazel, who ascended to the stars, and now she is gone. It is as she wished. It is as all Githyanki wish. I asked thee once, what is the value of a single life? For many of the Gith, it can be measured. A single evening's supper for the Lich Queen. To be ascended is to be consumed. Vlakith's hunger has known the heads of 50,000 of her subjects. But Lazelle was, perhaps, greater than the rest. I know not where Lazelle of Kalir is. I cannot sense her presence. Perhaps thou could. Know this. Her courage never faltered, her soul never waned. She accomplished all she e'er sought out. 
If she had fallen in battle, she would never have known regret. If she'd been killed in her duty, she would have known herself true. If Vlakith claimed her, it was Lazel's honor to be claimed. What indeed? Prick up thy ears and listen. The balance of the world restore. The balance of these lives, mortal and otherwise, brought to account. Hear me, thou heroes, wastrels, friends. I have waited long to tell you these words. It is over. For now. Thou played thy part in weaving the fabric of fate itself, but for every thread you sewed, so did the gods unravel another. Sleep, rest, revel, but be ready. For thou mayst yet be needed. Until we meet again, I wish thee every possible fortune, health, wealth, love, and above all, problems worth solving. To you. Thou art the dead three. Thy faces, gods. Thy actions, barely worthy of the name. Didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals. But souls vanish when their hosts become mind flayers. Didst think the other gods would not notice? Gods thou may be, yet thou hast proven thyself fools, everyone. The supplication of Bane, the whimper of Baal. The death mule of Merkel, felled by mortals. I overestimated thee. They did not. Vermin, away. Thou wilt trouble us no more. 